Welcome to Lunch with Tech Leaders, where we have engaging conversations about software development and cloud engineering with industry leaders and subject matter experts. These episodes are created by the Great Lakes Tech Leaders, an online community of technology practitioners. Please come join the conversation by visiting gltl.rbn.ai. Again, that's gltl.rbn.ai. Now strap in, because we're deploying to production in three, two, one. All right, so today's topic is um, open source, uh, contributing, uh, maintaining, stuff like that, uh, using whatever it may be. Um, personally, I've got a little bit of experience. Um, I've got quite a few projects of my own that I kind of just, you know, anything little handy stuff that I've written for AWS, you know, scripts and stuff like that. I try and um, put on GitHub and maintain and make sure the readme's are nice and stuff like that. Um, Brightbrain has a deployer and auto assembler that we maintain. Um, uh, and then other than that, I haven't really done too much contributing um, other than like the AWS docs and stuff like that. Anybody else got much experience um, on the topic? I uh, had a little bit. Um, I, I was wondering, do you have any policies right at RightBrain and like how you contribute or any standards, things like that? Uh, uh, or is it just kind of on your it? own? That yeah, I mean, that we don't. We I don't think we consider. We haven't. Cons, we haven't contributed as like official. Right brain is you know contributing to this project or anything like that. So it's kind of just been uh, personal. You know, I need something fixed on this project. I'll just make the change and make a pull request. Okay. Do you have any um, projects or repo? So you don't have any projects or repos that are under like Right Brain's like company. Yeah, oh, we do. Happens. Yeah, so we open okay. source deployer, which I believe you 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 probably uh, yep. have yeah. used. Um, and auto assembler, the um, the automatic sem semantic versioning script. I don't know if you guys use that one, but uh, yeah, I don't no. think we use that. No, we, it would have been nice. I think yeah. it would have helped us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there, <laughs> there's um, there's two projects that we we have public that uh. Let me just go and see if there's any other ones. Um, you know, they don't get very much usage or hits. Um, just kind of, you know, prior clients and stuff like that. But um, we've been trying to keep up on them. You know, Adam, I know you've uh, touched Deployer already. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I guess I've contributed to open source. <laughs> there we go. But yeah, I think part of the challenge as working professionals is like, um, you know, having time to, to dedicate to working on an open source project. I guess if it ties directly to the work that you're you're doing on a day-to-day -day basis, maybe that's more, like, I'm wondering how these people have time to, to, you know, to spend all this time on open source projects when they have to like, you know, kids, house, day-to-day -day lives, like, you know, how do you, how do you balance it all? There's only so much you can do in a day, right? Yeah, well, I mean, I think, um... Not all, not everybody has those. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <Yes. laughs> um, you know. Uh, and the other I, the other way is like I think a lot of companies kind of sponsor um, updates to open source projects when they heavily rely on the project. Um, they'll put engineers or provide give engineers time to contribute to that open source project in order to you know make sure that their their usage uh, continues to be supported. That makes more sense. Yeah, the guy that I watch on Twitch does, uh, he works for Twilio and, or sorry, uh, Netflix, and he does a lot of open source stuff. But I think they're so big that they can have like dedicated employees who just like do this stuff. I don't know. Well, I mean, if you think about it, it makes more sense to um, help maintain a um, an open source project than, you know, reinventing the wheel and building your own. Tom, have you done any uh, contributions outside of uh, the things we may have open sourced at some other companies? Uh, I haven't um, released any of it. the the one The one thing that we worked on in the previous company was kind of like a build off of something that I was doing personally. Um, 
but no no projects myself. I've I've contributed a little bit here and there, like you know, fix a a few typos or bugs on on other projects, but nothing too too big out there. Um, the reason I brought this up was you know working on a previous employer. Uh, we we first um, you know we're all about open source, and you know anything that we could open source um, we did. And then it was kind of brought up as kind of like an issue of liability and reputation, right? If these aren't maintained or if there's um, bugs in them or things like that, and then, you know, kind of developing standards around those and, um, you know, the various teams that own them and are responsible for making sure that they're updated and things like that. So, yeah, I was just wondering, you know, if you've seen that in the, the field and, um, yeah, what are some of those those practices and things like that? Yeah, I mean, um, from my experience, most open source seems to be on GitHub uh, rather than the other ones. And the the um, the issues is basically how they run a backlog of um, things that they need to do uh, for that project. Um, people may submit bugs or feature requests and stuff like that. So they kind of run, um, I don't know if, you know, maintainers will copy those things into, um, you know, other boards or something like that that they, they work off of, but I would assume probably not. Um, and just keep it all public on, on the issues. Um, and so like the standardization comes from, you know, how the team works together and, you know, with, with GitHub, they've got uh, really nice templates that they can add uh, so that when you create an issue, some stuff's already filled out. Like, um, And so I think that helps kind of organize and, and keep uh, keep the project moving in a, a, on a steady step. So would you say it's, question. well, yeah, would you say it's there's more benefit to the, um, you know, visibility, like, you know, we are contributing, people can see that versus the, you know, liability or, you know, negative side of things. Well, that's why uh, licenses exist, right? The liability. Yeah. Um, and I think, you know, uh, from a legal standpoint, if you're, if you're contributing to a, uh, a project that's public um, and it doesn't have a license, you should probably consider uh, <laughs> You're you're involved in it, um, but uh, for yeah. the most part, I think it's you know, I don't know how much liability. Really yeah, I guess you know more reputation, right? Like you know, if it's like bad code, there's bugs in it. You know, it's not up to date. It's like you know, and it has you know, X company's name on it, right? In their repository, is it? Um, yeah. No, I mean that's. That's kind of a question you take, right? Like, um, uh, yeah. So I, I didn't know if there was the, the engineering orgs, like the leadership's uh, decision, like should we open source this thing or not? Like, um, you know, when I decided we should open source deployer, it was kind of when we were kind of getting to the end of it. Um, you know, we we started going more towards like CDK and stuff like that. But our we have some customers that are still using it. Uh, so we made a big push to kind of tidy up the code, make it, make it, clean it up um, and say, here's kind of like the the last big hurrah. Um, and we open sourced it. Um, and then, you know, now we kind of, you know, if you, if customers need updates to it, you know, it's like they, they have the ability to make those updates and um, the community can continue to maintain it, but it's not going to be our core focus because we're, you know, we've moved on. Okay, yes, that kind of brings me to me, my next thing is where do you where do you draw the line, right? And what's proprietary and what you would make open source? Like how do you determine that or what do you have any set standards or rules or you just kind of for us, I don't think we were ever gonna make money off the player. Um so you know it was more so that you know quicken our workflow and give us a competitive edge uh, in like our speed of development. Um, but, you know, and if, if other teams want to use that, I mean, I don't think it, I don't think it gave us that much of a, 
of an edge that we needed to hide or like you know um like keep it proprietary you know so i think there is a there is a line and it's where kind of where like you're like where does monetization of something like that start um for an organization and if you're able to if you have a like something neat that you're able to monetize you start to look at like should i productize this versus make it open source um or do you go like the freemium route and say hey yeah we'll uh, we open sourced it but if you want support you got to pay for support or something like that right yeah yeah i would say that's kind of where uh where that line would be drawn right and the monetization aspects yeah and you know it's it's more so like what's your company about like for us we're we're not necessarily um we're not a product company we're a service company right um for us to be a product company we would have to invest in you know um you know people processes and things like that um to kind of get there so you know at this stage in our business that just it doesn't make sense right now for us but some for some people like you know groups of folks that have um built and maintained an open source project for a long time um you know i'm th thinking specifically like uh elastic search and chef and all these you see them start to make some you know interesting changes once they get to that point of you know like we got to monetize or else we're not going to be able to continue uh, continue maintaining this project um and so they go that route of kind of updating the licenses and things like that um to try and push you know push monetization um so that they can they can continue to you know run the thing yeah kind of on that note how do you you know being a consultant company how do you balance what you're going to make open source versus keeping proprietary for your clients and like how do you communicate that to them and the legalities of that like you're making something new but you could use it for other clients right and like how do you how do you balance that um i think you know if it's built specific for a client um, the things that like you know if it's built specific for a client it's probably not going to be extremely useful to an another client right um, yeah so, so i mean so like cdk constructs right you make you make one that you could use for other ones and you spend you know 50 percent of your time working on this construct that you know you're going to leverage for this client that you're working on but you want to you know the idea is you can leverage this construct now I mean, going forward like how do you you know do you charge yeah, them i mean at right, the, that we, client? we we do have you know we, we do have use of things like that um if it's not proprietary like you know not code that's proprietary business logic or anything for them like cdk constructs are kind of in that weird spot like um mm -hmm. there's nothing proprietary to the business about those it's just aws resources put together right so um our 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 agreement does have like we are allowed to reuse those things um and that's in our our terms of services um and but like you know if it's got like cl client names and stuff in it we're not going to post those or anything like that like kevin right now is working on taking all of his knowledge that he um has built about cdk um you know he's referencing you know a lot of the code that's that the client has asked us to build like they asked us to build this because they needed it now and that's why it got built in the first place um which is where you know the the moral aspect of it comes from it's like it's not like we're we're build, building a client to build open source stuff they're asking for something specific and we're building it and then we're putting in the investment to um make it generic enough and usable enough uh that we think we would want to um open source it right yeah so it's not like we would open source their repository of course right um but we we may may take those patterns that we um you know developed um and our thought thought processes on how to do specific um infrastructure engineering and apply that to you know kind of um you know something that we're looking to open source so that the community can have have use of it and i think that you know our clients specifically um 
you know, we do these things to benefit our clients, not to, you know, take from them. Right. Yeah. Um, so that if they're, if they're using our, you know, the way the, the what I'm looking at um, specifically with like a CDK uh, construct repository or library is that if we get, if our clients are using this, then they continue to kind of get support and updates as we, you know, work on stuff. And that kind of makes us all better, right? Um, yeah. So, you know, they don't have to, if they've got good control over their, you know, they've learned how to use the CDK stuff and they just want to, uh, they see we, we've got a new version, they can just swap up their new version after, you know, you know, we're done with their project. They continue to kind of get new features and support. And if they want to contribute, they can contribute and that benefits the rest of our clients and our customers. And that's really what the uh, community um aspect of open source is all about right yeah yeah I, I completely agree with that it's just just kind of that balance right i so i i know when you make things generic enough to work for other projects it's going to take more time right you you have to mm -hmm. you have to do a little more effort to it to uh to kind of make things more generic usable across um different services or you know teams or things like that so it's just kind of like that you know you're you're billing a company you know time and material and you're spending a little extra time to make it you know open source usable to the public right that's i was kind of like uh you know that that thinking and where you draw the line there and but yeah i don't i don't want to take up you know, if anybody else has questions before we jump on to uh, jump over to consuming open source. Oh, that consume a whole lot of it. I'll tell you that. Yeah. Almost exclusively. So, yeah, do you guys have any um, standards, practices on what you can consume and what you can use right do you have like a buffered repository it's like you can only use these approved packages or you can use anything you want but you know maybe there's it's scanned or whatever things like Huge that or... yeah scanning stuff like that i think is a good good rule of thumb um if there's a eula that needs to be accepted like for instance chef i think like making sure that um for us our customers are aware like if i was working for an internal company um you know i would probably pass it past our lawyers and say hey I need to I need to accept this EULA. You know, I could uh, could use your guys' eyes on reviewing it to make sure that we're not under any obligations, stuff like that. Okay. You know, you always want to keep an eye on on those things. And you know, again, I'm just thinking specifically about Chef and how I think it's uh, Chef version 15. Um, they started making you accept a EULA that you would buy support if you're using it in a um, commercial capacity or something like that. Hmm. Which I think is probably going to be the death of the chef. But yeah, how about uh, scenarios where the open source thing you're using is no longer supported, Tom? I think we've seen that yeah. with like entity framework that we used. Um, not sure, like you know, I'm not sure if there's much else to say, but like it is a concern. Like sometimes an open source thing goes, you know, just the support for it doesn't last forever and then all of a sudden you're you know a big portion of your business is tied into to something that's you know kind of doa or just you know no well, longer supported so if it's a big part of your business and you're, you're making money on it then you need to you know invest in moving to something else that is continued to be supported or circum supporting it yourself yeah you know if it's a big part of your business and it's going to cost you more to move to something else then just have your developers start maintaining it or fork it and take it private, you know, that's, that's always mm -hmm. an option too. It, or if you've got customizations that need to be done to it to make it work for your business case, um, you yeah, you've always got the, the option of forking it and then just pulling updates uh, from the main line into your, your private fork. Yeah. Yeah. So this next thing kind of goes consuming and um, contributing uh the different types of licenses that you brought up right like you know when contributing or you know when deciding to make something open source what what do you all use and and why i mean i'm a fan of the you know 
MIT and Apache licenses um, because uh, they're really the, the more free route, right? Um, there are some licenses. I, I, I don't really know uh, know them all like the back of my hand. Um, but I do what I do know is that there are some licenses where if you you make updates to this thing when you're you're legally supposed to com commit it back. So that the 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 support and the uh, contributions continue to you know things can continue to be maintained because they what I think the the idea there is like um, you know we've put time and effort into building and maintaining this thing that you're now benefiting from so like you you need to contribute right yeah yeah I'm, um big fan of both of those two I know that. I don't know the exact reasoning, right, of, of the difference between using like the MIT and like Apache 2 licenses or, or whatever Apache licenses. Um, I know like enterprise like favors Apache 2 and it's more from like a legal stand aspect of like not like a liability issue. Um, I forget, you know, the exact reasons or whatever. Um, but I, I know a lot of companies wouldn't use like the initial serverless framework because it was MIT. Um, but then like the the new things that they're doing, they made it like the Apache 2 license um, so that it could be adopted. But yeah, I don't know the exact reasonings, but. Yeah, I know the MIT one, that's pretty much as open as it can get, right? It's like you're even able to distribute without limitation like that code itself if you, if you wanted to utilize that and you know sell software that utilizes that yeah it looks like distributions uh permissive under all of these it's like the one thing that's different is trademark use this license explicitly states that it it does not grant trademark rights even though licenses Without such agreement, probably do grant any implicit trademark rights. So, like the Apache 2 has trademark use, but the MIT doesn't. So, I think what that means is like you're you're not allowed to use their trademarks, like um, mm -hmm. when you when you redistribute or modify it. So you can't say like this is the Apache, or like what's what's one with uh. Apache license is probably anything from Apache, right? <laughs> um, uh, hmm. But you would or be patent to... patent use. Apache two has patent use under it. That MIT doesn't. Interesting. Yeah, I don't know the exact reason. I was wondering if you, you know, had. All have looked into it, right? Had your lawyers say, Yeah, we want to use MIT for this reason or Apache 2 for this reason. Yeah, personally, I just shoot from the hip. <laughs> uh, but, you know, like I said, we, we don't really have much out there. Uh, yeah. I looked at Deployer. We, I did put a uh, uh, license, I put an MIT license on this. Goes on for a little while. Software as is. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It doesn't look like there's very much variation here. Um, yeah, it's forward. usually a little subtle. Things, right? Like you say, like, oh, yeah, you have to, modifications, you have to do something special with, right? Like the copy left versus right or things like that. Right. Um, like for instance, to close source, uh, uh, that's an interesting one, right? So if you're building software and selling it and it includes software that has the, uh, a GNU license in it, then you have to say, hey, I'm actually using this product in this software that we're, we're you know, building for you. Yeah. Where with like the Apache 2 license, you don't have to do that, I don't think. There is some disclosure, it looks like here. Yeah. 
Yeah, this yeah. is have you do any of you guys uh you know have like a little personal github that you keep uh you know small stuff in and have you had much uh you know many much engagement on any of those personally no um no yeah previous, same personally no <laughs> previous employer we kind of had a little engagement on our cdk repo people reached out to us so it was kind of nice but yeah i've actually got more engagement on my my personal one than we do on the right brain stuff um so let's see 13 forks on kms tool which is just a, a python script that um does envelope encryption with kms um, nice the aws batch example is pretty uh that i built was pretty hot and it's 94 stars and uh 34 forks dang yeah But you know, when you when you just when I decide to do that type of stuff, I, I spend a lot of my time, um, you know, making sure that the README is extremely like really useful to the people that are coming across it. And I think that really does you know make sure that you get high engagement, so that people know how to use it, you know, kind of get trained up on it, um, and you know, kind of helps helps the the community grow. Yeah, for sure. It's like almost impossible to use something when there's not a readme. Yeah. You're just kind of like lost and it's just like, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you can see like, uh, you know, I spent my own time building a lot of this stuff. Um, so I'm, I'm glad that it's getting used. Um, but, you know, I, I, this is this was me giving back some of my knowledge about you know something I did um, to make it so other people can learn from it. So, uh, but I think that also kind of sp spawns engagement in the community, and um, you know, you're showing, giving back to um, something that's grown like I've grown from. Um, without open source, I wouldn't be where I'm at in my position in, in my career. So, you know, giving back and, and providing to some of the to others, I think is um, just good for my own self self worth, <laughs> uh, uh, and um, you know helping others grow, right? But there's a there's a lot of work that went into some of this stuff, right? Um, so if not a little, uh, you got to be, you know, Adam, you were talking about the amount of time and stuff that uh, goes into it. It's not insignificant, and when people have issues, you know, you gotta you gotta make sure to you know, at least, you know, reply and say, hey, I really don't have time work to work on this anymore or whatever. But, um, you know, because it, it, think about if it was you on the other side of that, you know what I mean? Uh, reaching out to somebody who's built something uh, and then they kind of just abandon it. That's, that's kind of, it's a letdown, right? Uh, when you find something that's really cool, you just need a little bit of info. Yeah. Any other uh, topics you wanted to bring up, Tom, or was this a good spot to to end the conversation for today? Yeah, that's uh, that's it for me. All right. Well, I think it's been a great conversation. Uh, I want to thank you all for for joining in and joining us for lunch here. Um, and uh, we're going to do it again next week. Next week's topic is uh, hiring good engineering teams. I'm going to be running that one. Um, I think I've got a pretty good engineering team. Uh, so I'm going to see if anybody else wants, if you guys, you know, always welcome to join, come back. Um, you don't got to leave the discussion. You can always jump in and be a fly on the wall. Um, so thank you all. And until uh, next week. Adios. Thanks. See ya. Thank you, everyone.